Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. We are going to get a double dose today as lesson seven is very, very short. Uh, lesson seven is about the heart rate and I'm going to quickly explain it, but I think you know a lot about it. So what I'm gonna have you do instead is design your own experiment. Uh, the second part or lecture eight is titled the cardiac cycle. It will take up most of the time in this lesson. Uh, it is about how the heart beats. There is an electrical signal that is needed. Uh, it's about where that originates and how that travels through the heart and how that makes sense in how the heart beats. Uh, so let's get into it. We have the heart rate first. I believe this is the only slide. So heart rate is a measure of how fast your heart is beating. We usually record it in beats per minute. That could be 60 beats per minute or 100 beats per minute, as those are the normal resting heart rates for adults. Anywhere between 60 and 100 is essentially normal. You don't want to be as, like, you want to be lower resting if you can, um, but nothing alarming is going to happen to you if you're at 80 or 95 or something like that. Uh, there are tons of things that can affect our heart rate. Exercise, meditation, sleep, somebody scares you, caffeine, anything can affect our heart rate. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to design your own experiment to determine the effects of different activities on your heart rate. You're going to choose these activities. You're going to choose some that you think will raise your heart rate, some that will lower your heart rate, and it'll be your job to determine the effects and uh, record that information. So you're going to need to design it and I can help you through that no problem. So that's the whole of lesson seven. If you have any questions about what I want you to do there, please let me know. Lesson eight is the cardiac cycle, as I mentioned. This is about how our heart beats, how it works. So what I'd like you to do first is check out these two videos, and after you've checked out the videos, come on back and um, keep going from here. So what these two, two videos show is uh, how a heart can keep beating even if it's the animal is dead and the heart has been extracted you can see the turtle heart beating in his hand and the python heart even after he's essentially destroyed the animal um, the heart is still beating how is that even possible so this is possible because the cardiac cycle is um, taking place I guess I didn't do a good job of organizing this but essentially um, I guess we'll get to that, the answer to that question. So how does the heart beat? The cardiac cycle is the performance of the human heart from the ending of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next. It consists of two periods. Um, one is, is which the heart is mostly relaxed and refills with blood. These are the ventricles, I should say. The ventricles are relaxed and refilling with blood, called diastole. And then there is a uh, period of robust contraction and pumping of blood called systole. So the ventricles relax and the blood flows into them and then they contract and they pump uh, blood out. So the relaxing is diastole and the pumping is systole. Uh, in a healthy heart, all activities and rests during each individual cardiac cycle or heartbeat are initiated by signals of the heart's electrical conduction system. So why does the heart keep beating? because there is a heart electrical conduction system. These impulses ultimately stimulate the heart muscle to contract and thereby to eject blood from the ventricles into the arteries. So you don't need to think about your heart beating. Uh, there is a whole system on your heart, within your heart, that sends the conduction signal, the heart electrical signal, to make it work. This all starts in what we call the sinoatrial node. So that is right here. It is at the top of the right atrium. It is the, uh, near the superior and inferior vena cava. Uh, essentially, like what I almost think of as the start of the heart, as that's where the blood flows into first. So the sinoatrial node, or SA node, that's point three here, is the point of origin for producing a wave of electrical impulses that stimulates the atrial contraction. So essentially, the sinoatrial node starts the whole thing. It produces an electrical signal and it stimulates the contraction of the atria. So that means the electrical signal goes through here and to here, and these two contract and pump blood into the ventricles. These ventricles at that time are relaxed, so they are uh, receiving blood, putting it into diastole. So the, they are relaxed, there is no pumping going on. Pumping from the atrium into the ventricle is diastole as the ventricles are relaxed. 
So the impulses of the wave are delayed upon reaching the atrioventricular node. So essentially they have to travel across the right atria, which takes some time. This acts as a gate to slow and coordinate the electrical current. So you can see here that there are arrows pointing to this node, the AV node, the atrioventricular node. And again, it makes sense, it's between the atria and the ventricle, just like the atrio atrioventricular valves. This is the atrioventricular node. So the sinoatrial node produces an electrical impulse, makes the atria contract, and then sends the impulse to the atrioventricular node. That node, as you can see, is connected to electrical um, nerves in the septum. You remember the septum is the middle portion of the heart? That is right here. So that is known as the bundle of Hiss. It is an important part of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The, this is the bundle of Hiss right here that goes down through the septum. So there's a right bundle branch and a left bundle branch, but this whole thing down the middle is the bundle of Hiss. So uh, re recapping, sinoatrial node starts it, uh, atria contract, ventricles relax, the atrioventricular node receives it and sends the uh, information down the septum in the bundle of Hiss. It brings the electrical signal from the AV node to the apex or the bottom point of the heart. It brings it to the bottom because now we need to squeeze the ventricles from the bottom up. If we squeezed from the, the ventricles down, there would be nowhere for the blood to go. The two ways that the ventricles point are up, go to the lungs or to the rest of the body. So this bundle of Hiss branches to the left and the right bundle of branches. Uh, as it goes to the bottom so that it can split off and go around the heart right here. So there's the left and the right bundle branches that split to the sides. Now the electrical signal can start the squeeze of the heart from here and it will squeeze this part to force the blood up and squeeze this part to force the blood up. Uh, the Purkinje fibers are located in the inner ventricular walls of the heart. So that is these right here. These are the Purkinje fibers. So after the bundle of Hiss are the Purkinje fibers. They are in the ventricle walls and they stimulate the, electric, the um, ventricles to contract. So the Purkinje fibers allow the heart's conduction system to create synchronized contractions of its ventricles. That's very, very important that it's all synchronized and are therefore essential for the maintaining of a consistent heart rhythm. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, electrical signal goes down and then is uh, coordinated with these two right here to produce the, sig the contraction that sends the blood up through the ventricles into the um, pulmonary system and the systemic system. What I would like you guys to do is I'd like you to complete the short research sheet that's attached. Let me know if you have any questions about bradycardia and tachycardia. Essentially, the heart is beating too slow, so you need a pacemaker. The heart is beating too fast, you need a defibrillator. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, please let me know. I think the electrical conduction system of the heart is super interesting, uh, and there's so much more that we could talk about if we had unlimited time. Uh, I think this is also, yes, we have quiz two next, so uh, let me know when you're ready for that. And there are two more lessons after this to get to the circulatory system test. So if you have any questions about any of this, uh, let me know, but study up for this one because it will be difficult. It's all about the heart. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon.